it. We did it. <laughs> yeah, well done. I'm so sorry that happened, you know. No trouble. Oh, what can you do? Steve, yeah. oh, it's so nice to see you today. Yeah, lovely to see you too. Happy Tartan Day to you. Happy Tartan Day indeed. Yes, and you've got something there. I've got my, uh, I've got my mug. <laughs> yes, I have a, um, a little bit of thought here for Tartan Day. Maximum okay. tartage. Yes, and to you, Slonja. Good health. Absolutely. So, Steve, I just, I just wanted um, for the people that don't know you yet, to for them to learn a little bit about you because you know I, I so much enjoy you and your lovely wife Sandra. You're just some of the nicest, kindest people that I know and that I've ever met. And it's been I don't know, but I think we've known each other probably about twenty years or so. I want to say we we started Brit Week together. It's a long time, long time so, ago. yeah, so, yeah, let's think about that. I mean, you're 35 now, so probably <laughs> yeah, when we were about 20, I think. <laughs> I was two, you were three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, no, but it was great. We did lots of playing together. I remember we were playing those Brickwick shows, and, you know, we'd open up with the pipes and full band, and, you know, we were doing a lot of, um, you know, a lot of rock and roll. Right, a lot of rock and roll. Yes. Rock and roll. Yeah. I like that. Wow, well, give me that. Yeah, okay, look, no, we'll be raffling this. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be raffling this later for you. It's going to be the price. Forget about the whiskey. Uh, my precious. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. There's Kelsey Deanne on our, our Scott Week director. Yeah, no, that's that's fantastic. I think we should raffle it off along with the Val Vinny and the we box <laughs> on YouTube. But, but in all seriousness, I, I wanted to make this about about you. And I just wanted to talk about you. I so enjoy your music. I think I told you this the other day, but this is the truth. And it's because I enjoy it. I'm not just you know saying this to be gracious. I have your CDs in my car. I love I love the album. And I don't take them out, so I don't I don't remember the exact albums because they're in my CD players, but the radio. Yes. I love that. That is probably one hang of on, the Hang on, hang on. Shut up down there. <laughs> All right, the postman's coming. We've got three dogs out the back there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is why I don't worry about burglars, you know. They're called Rip, Tear, and Lacerate. So, right. Shut up, Rip. <laughs> what can you do? Yeah. We're all in the sanctuary of our own home, right? That's now. right. Yes, the postman. The postman's arrived. So, uh, yeah, he doesn't like rip, tear, and wrestle, uh, that's for sure. Lacerate, sorry. Shut up, lacerate. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think your postman knew you were coming online right now and decided to come at this as that time. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. That's, uh, he, he's on cue, actually. Yeah, very multi So, Steve, you're not only an amazing musician, I you're a prolific songwriter, truly. You have some of the most amazing... Um, songs out there in the world and you're so uplifting with a lot of your music and a lot of what you do and so I just wanted you to talk a little bit about you know um, when you first when music first touched your heart when did you when when did you know you wanted to pick something up and play it or sing? I, I think it was when my dad gave me a rattle I can remember being in a um, you know one of those cribs those cots I would have been about two and a half you know, these days, people are terrified you're going to chew the lid off, you know. But in the 60s, it didn't really matter. So I got this, like, rattle. My father was a musician, so I was always surrounded by music. Um, and then from there, all joking aside, it moved into singing in the choirs at Sunday school at the churches. So I was fortunate enough to be a young first soprano and um, playing for Radio 4 ZA. Wow. And Invercargill and... Um, we were singing for the infirmed and, and people in old homes. People basically couldn't go to church. So I was the young boy, you know. Oh, how lovely is the evening. On the little <laughs> microphone. It was actually a big microphone, big radio microphone back then. Um, and then my voice broke and I was up the back with the tenors. And suddenly I realized this is not fun anymore. 
uh, and then discovered that girls like boys that play the guitar. So <laughs> kind of went from, from that, you know. To, to, my first song was The Answers Blowing in the Wind, you know. How many roles this man will fan? Yeah, the first song I learned. And um, I'm kind of influenced a lot. My father had a wonderful record collection from all the classics. I mean, classical music, Beethoven, Bach, Strauss, all that. And then we would have Deep Purple, Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, Eric Clapton. Oh, such an amazing crew. But I really got serious and decided to become professional when I was about 17. I got to meet Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee. Sonny Terry is an old black blues musician, and um, he's from, uh, you know, the Mississippi um, and blind, and I was his eyes for the whole day when we were playing at the festival, so that was great. I got to meet Desi Gillespie. He was running around looking at all the kids and going, <laughs> and puffing out his big cheeks. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I mean, you know, that's when I got to learn about songwriting as well, um, from listening. You gotta write those songs about what happens to you and what's true in your heart, you know, so... That really influenced me. It annoyed the hell out of my mother that was looking forward to me becoming a physiotherapist, you know. <laughs> well, well, can you imagine someone learning to play bagpipes under your roof? <laughs> yeah, I yeah, that's it. right. Yeah, well, at least you could get the dogs to shut up. <laughs> I can play over them. <laughs> yeah. So tell us a little bit about your career and where things have taken you and, and your, your other passions that you've got going on. Okay, um, I, I did a lot of professional theatre. I went to England. Uh, my grandmother's a full-blooded Scot. I'm wearing the um, St Andrew's golfing top today. Nice. And uh, Dad's, um, you know, English, so I had UK passport even though my grandmother said I should get a Scottish one. Um, all joking aside, moving forward, right, no <laughs> politics. Um, I lived in London for a while, and then I was doing theatre in Henley-on-Thames. Um, Henley's just down the M4, past Windsor towards Reading. And from there, I got into professional theatre, and I auditioned in the West End of London. Uh, it's unfortunate to be working with Kate and Annie Winslet, Kate was very young then. Wow. Um, so, yeah, it was one of the uh, girls that took me to the West End. And lo and behold, I passed the audition. I was doing the New York Broadway musical tour of Europe for hair. You know, hair, daddy, <laughs> hair, mama. Everywhere, oh, daddy, daddy, hair, hair, hair. <laughs> and, um, you know, long story short, got agents and all that good stuff, and then went into film and television, and then moved to the United States and coming right up to speed with everybody at home now. You can check me out on Netflix with Rob Schneider. It's called Real Rob and it's season two. It's the latest uh, season out and I'm in episode three and I'm playing uh, Paul McCartney's guitarist and it's absolutely hilarious. So that's Real Rob next time you're looking on Netflix for something you've not watched and you'll be able to catch on to yours truly. So that's kind of like my acting background. And during that time of doing theatre, you know, I met some wonderful people. I got started in the business with a gentleman called Robin Lumley, keyboard player who played in a band called Brand X. And Brand X was before Genesis. And Robin was really good friends with Peter Gabriel, and he kind of took me under his wing. I was young Steve. You know, it was like, <laughs> oh, you've got those lovely songs, Steve, but you need to write another little part to them, a little eight, and, you know, you just can't do verse, chorus, and, you know, I'm just... So he, he sorted me out, like, you know, which was, I'm very grateful for that. And, you know, part of my journey, I got to meet Chris Kimsey, who's an amazing producer. He engineered Frampton Comes Alive and produced Some Girls by the Rolling Stones. He was a huge help and influence. Um, you know, I'm just so grateful for, for basically, you know, that whole time there. The Thames Valley Gang was awesome. I got to meet Ian Pace and Vicky Brown and um, the late Vicky Brown and uh, the husband Joe and the kids, Sam and Peter Brown. Sam Brown had a massive hit with, You gotta stop before you break my heart. 
just just you know the Thames Valley gang. It's you know I was a part of that young Steve. Yeah. But here I am, still rocking and still rocking and rolling. Yeah. <laughs> Very fun. And I know I, you you've introduced me to a lot of amazing people, and I was you know I. I I try not to get starstruck with people, but I would certainly love, I just have to tell you, sweet Scotty Page, I just adore him. He's he's fantastic. He's just a, a kind um, and wonderful person, such as yourself. And so that was great. Yeah. I, I appreciate all those associations. Yeah, no, Scotty's great. We first met uh, when we played on the main stage in the House of Blues. I mean, that was like 10 years ago. I had a little residency there in the foundation room playing with the drummer, uh, Kofi Baker. His uh, daddy is uh, Ginger, and we had a little show there called The Cook and Baker Show. So I would then go downstairs and Scotty would be like, hey, come on stage. So that's when we first met, and we rocked that House of Blues. So since then, we've done quite a few gigs together. Scotty and I did a, a Brit Week gig together, actually. He was very pleased about that because the lead guitarist, unfortunately, couldn't come. He was ill, and Scott got to play all the lead breaks on the saxophone, <laughs> which was wonderful. Because mostly, you know, you blow a few numbers on the sax, and then you have to sort of go back a bit and maybe tap on the tambourine. But he was like, every song, there's the lead break goes there, you know. He, <laughs> he knocked a, no, he knocked everybody's song, so that was play a, play a few, Play a few songs on the saxophone, get, go hang out with the bagpiper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that's right. We figure out how we can do sax and the pipe, you know. Like, <laughs> Like we can call it sexy, sexy pipes. <laughs> Very cute. But yeah. I just wanted, I, I, before we're, we're going to have you play, I want you to play some of your music so everyone can hear you, but we're about ready to do that. But I just okay. wanted to thank you. I wanted to thank you and your lovely wife, Sandra, so much. You've been so instrumental. You're founding members of the Scott Week Board, um, along with, with me and some others. And really, this was something you really started um, you know, talking about a long time ago to me, we we're always, you know, at the Brit Week or whatever it was, and you said, we've got to do Scott Week. So this is really something that you originally inspired so long ago. And thank you. And thanks, Sandra, for all of your, your work and your help and your support. No, you're most welcome. And thank you the most, because you've made it come true with your tenacity and force. You know, the best president for this. And long may she reign, you know. Um, <laughs> no. Which is great. You. I mean, you know, you've really taken up the torch and forged the mantle. Uh, you know, we're all behind you. I'm delighted to be a part of it. It's just, I'm just so happy that it's become a reality. And, uh, you know, there's 50,000 Scots immigrated to New Zealand and down to Southland there, in Bacargill and Dunedin. So there's a massive community there. And we're just going to reconnect with everyone, I hope, globally. And uh, I think we'll be quite staggered at the amount of numbers that there are. You know, it's like the thistle, really. You blow that Scottish thistle, and all the, all the seeds fly all over the planet, you know. So I put down lots of roots everywhere. I don't have the funny accent, but, you know, you can see I'm a bit of a crazy bastard, you know. <laughs> it's wonderful. Thank you so much. And let's listen to some wonderful So um, this, is, this is a song written by um, Jimmy Page and Robert Plant. And I was thinking about all the social social distancing that's going on. And this is the only song I could find, um, you know, which is about social distancing. If you listen to the lyrics, you'll get it. You know, I can't play with you no more. And all the fish dying in dirty water. It's a little bit like what we're going through, through now. So it's like this. Let my head 
everyone to watch you know to to follow you and to watch your um website because when you play live it's just such a surreal experience and we all need to come out and, and see you that's just a wonderful wonderful experience it's so uplifting so much fun so we're going to be waiting to hear as soon as you're able to do more live performances we're going to be right there so keep so us thank you Thank you so much. Yes, I'm going to be starting something and uh, bringing on special friends from all over the world to, to speak and to play. And so it's going to be fun. And uh, you'll be able to watch that on stevecookofficial.com. 
That's wonderful. Steve Cook, thank you so much for being with us today. Give our love to Sandra. I will. Take care. God bless and be healthy. You as well. Okay. All the best. And bye for now. Ciao, ciao.